good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, i'll be talking today about the non spaced enhanced hash thin mask uh, construction with, uh, which i've worked on uh, jointly with midulnandi and abhijit datta as we all know uh, both the receiver and the sender share the same uh, secret key for uh, sharing uh, message authentication codes in the, in the symmetric key setting. Here, Alice wants to send the message I accept to Bob, and Eve is an active adversary who might change the message uh, before Bo it reaches Bob. However, Alice uh, appends a tag T uh, to the message, which she computes uh, using the secret key that she and Bob share. And Bob will only read the message if he can verify the tag using his copy of the key. If Eve still changes the message, then the new message may not match the old tag, and uh, Bob will not read it. In order to carry out a successful forgery, Alice, uh, sorry, Eve will play a game with Alice and Bob. She will uh, query. Uh, make QM authentication queries uh, to Alice, uh, and she'll get back uh, the corresponding tags for each message. And she will also make uh, QV verification queries to Bob, and he will respond uh, by telling her whether or not each message tag pair is valid. If Eve can then uh, make a new and valid uh, message tag pair, uh, that she sends to Bob, then Bob will not know that this message was tampered with, and he will read it. So uh, such a such a forgery, uh, we can see an example of such a forgery on a birthday-bound secure Mac here. Uh, so we have ECBC as an example, and uh, this uh, Mac has the expansion property. So if the tags for two messages collide then the tags for any other two messages, which have the previous two messages as uh, prefixes, will also collide. So Eve can uh, use this property of ECBC and uh, make a successful forgery. If she finds out that the tag for the messages I accept and I reject are the same, then uh, she can add the phrase your paper to her message and carry out a successful forgery, and Bob will read the message. Such collisions uh, can be found with high probability within the bird debug. So if uh, it's an n-bit uh, message, then approximately 2 power n by 2 queries. However, uh, for smaller message blocks, like, say, 64 bits, for uh, which is generally used in lightweight cryptography, uh, this is not sufficient because, as we can see, ECBC is secure only up to 2 power 25 queries, and PMAC can be attacked in just 2 power 18 queries. So uh, this is a serious data constraint, and we need higher security. Wegman Carter Mac uh, is a Mac uh, that uh, gives quite a better security as compared to ECBC. Uh, it uses a nonce input along with the message to compute the tag. And uh, as we can see, it has uh, it is secure up to approximately 2 power 54 queries. So that's quite an improvement. However, uh, if the nonce is misused even once, uh, I mean, if the nonce is repeated even once, then uh, it is completely insecure. This construction is completely insecure. So uh, we need. Uh, in cases where such repetitions cannot be controlled. For example, uh, if the uh, size of the nonce space is small or if the nonce is reset for some reason, then we need uh, at least some security. So uh, we need constructions that not only give beyond birthday bound security in the nonce respecting setting, but also some security in the nonce misusing setting. For example, the encrypted Wegman Carter with Davis Mayer construction that was proposed by Cogliati and Surin uh, is a Mac. Uh, it is again a non space Mac, and it has beyond birthday bound security in, uh, when the nonce is respected and birthday bound security uh, when the nonce is misused. 
The decrypted Wegman Carter with Davis Mayer, which was proposed by the et al., is another construction uh, that has the, uh, a similar security uh, situation. But again, uh, these two uh, Macs also suffer from uh, a bird on security when the nonce is misused. And for similar reasons, as in the non-suspecting settings that I mentioned, we do need uh, beyond bird on security at least up to a certain level, even when the nonce is misused. So uh, we have proposed a construction uh, that not only gives beyond bird on security when nonce is respected, but also uh, gives gracefully degrading security when the nonce is misused. This means that uh, just a few instances of nonce misuse would not really cause the security to go down to the bird day bound. Maybe after a lot of uh, <laughs> repetitions are made, but not immediately. For this, uh, we introduce a concept uh, which is uh, similar to multi-collision in nonces, but it's slightly weaker than that, which we call uh, faulty nonces. And uh, we use uh, two tools, a theorem on the multi-collision of hash values of messages and uh, an extended version of mirror theory for which we give a proof, albeit for a weaker bound than the one provided by Paterin. And uh, uh, we also have uh, demonstrated uh, an application of our Mac in an authenticated encryption scheme, which is based on the CWCA. So this is our construction, uh, which we call nonce-based enhanced hash thin mask. Uh, as we can see, it is very similar to the enhanced hash thin mask uh, construction proposed by Minamatsu. Uh, the only differences are that uh, ours is a single keyed version. It has it is nonce-based instead of using random sorts, and it has a domain separation involved. As I have. Uh, already mentioned, NEHTM is secure roughly up to 2 power n by 3 authentication queries and 2 power n verification queries when the nonce is respected. And uh, its security degrades gracefully when the nonce is misused. In fact, uh, this degradation is linear. So when the number of faulty nonces, which here we are denoting by mu, becomes uh, pretty much equal to the number of uh, authentication queries, QM, only then does the security fall down to the bird bound. Uh, but if, let's say, a constant number of uh, faulty nonces are uh, present, then it won't affect the security that much. Uh, also, uh, this is the uh, definition of uh, faulty nonces. So if uh, we have a nonce that, uh, if if we have a query that has a nonce value which is equal to the uh, to the value of a nonce that has already been uh, queried earlier, then that nonce is called a faulty nonce. So, for example, uh, in this case, oh, sorry, yeah. So, in this case, huh, uh, all the five nonce values n1, n2, n3, n4, n5. They, are, uh, they count as uh, five multi-collision in nonces. However, uh, if we count faulty nonces, then n1 is not a faulty nonce since it is a fresh value, whereas n2, n3, n4, and n5, they are all faulty nonces. Um, in uh, this case, n1 and n3 do not count as faulty nonces, whereas uh, they are included in multi-collisions. Another point, another difference uh, of faulty nonces uh, from multi-collisions is that this uh, constitutes a two multi-collision and this constitutes a four multi-collision, whereas uh, we count all the faulty nonces together, and so N2, N4, N5, and N6 together constitute four faulty nonces. We prove uh, the security of our construction using the expectation method that was introduced by Huang and Tessaro, and uh, this is a generalization of the coefficients edge technique. And uh, we use uh, the two tools that I have already mentioned. Uh, the, we bound the number of multi-collisions of 
hash values of messages uh, using a theorem that we uh, that I shall shortly be uh, presenting. And uh, we also uh, give an extended version of mirror theory uh, for which we provide a proof, partial proof, diluted proof. So our first tool is the multi-collision theorem, which uh, gives a bound on the minimum probability of uh, getting xi plus 1 multi-collisions in hash values amongst Q messages, where uh, we have an epsilon universal hash function. And it can be uh, proved, this theorem can be proved using the union bound and this counting lemma. Furthermore, uh, this lemma uh, can be proved by, uh, so this, uh, okay, the statement of this lemma is that if we are given a vertex set of a particular size, and uh, if we um, construct a graph by adding edges uh, such that the number of edges is more than this value, q square upon, ceiling of q square upon 2 xi, then uh, we will uh, certainly get at least one edge between two vertices in any collection of xi plus one vertices that we choose. So uh, here, uh, the proof is quite simple. We uh, divide all the q vertices into xi subcollections of q by xi, ceiling of q by xi vertices each. The last uh, set may contain, last collection may contain lesser vertices. And uh, we add edges such that each uh, collection becomes a clique. And no two vertices in different cliques uh, share any edge. So if we choose one vertex out of each collection, then we have chosen a total of xi vertices. And since we want to choose xi plus one vertices, there has to be uh, we can choose vertices in any other way also, but that will certainly uh, ensure uh, an edge between two vertices. And even if we choose it in this way, so basically by the pigeonhole principle, we uh, definitely have at least one pair of uh, vertices that share an edge. So that's how we prove this lemma. The next tool that we have used is an extended version of mirror theory. So for that, we first define uh, the system of equations induced by an edge-labeled graph. As we can see here, we have a graph that has labels on its edges. And uh, we assume the vertices of the graph to denote the variables of the equations. And whenever a pair of vertices is connected by an edge, then uh, it, is, uh, it induces the equation in this way, so there are two, if y1 and y2 are vertices connected by an edge, then we have the equation y1 plus y2 is equal to lambda 1, 2. And then we define uh, an injective solution to a system of equations that is induced by a graph in this way to basically be a solution uh, for all these vertices such that uh, the system of, e the solution is consistent with all the equations. We can extend this concept to involve non-equations as well. So for example, uh, the vertices y5 and y6 induce a non-equation. Uh, y5 plus y6 is not equal to lambda 1, 3. And we can in, uh, extend the definition of injective solutions to include these non-equations also. So it is uh, pretty much clear that there can exist graphs that only induce, uh, that have, uh, that induce equations uh, and non-equations that only have inconsistent solutions or uh, that have equations that give redundant information and such things. So we need to define uh, what are good graphs. So this is an example of a good graph. Uh, a good graph cannot have cycles that are, uh, uh, that consist of edges uh, that only induce equations because such a cycle will either give us an inconsistent solution or uh, it will give us redundant information depending upon whatever the labels of its edges are. Uh, a good graph cannot have paths uh, 
with edges that uh, induce equations and uh, whose edge labels sum to zero, because then such a path will basically become a cycle and the same problem will occur. A good graph can also not have cycles with exactly one edge inducing non-equations uh, such that the sum of its edge labels is zero. So here, if lambda two prime were to become zero, then the sum of then it would force the sum of these two vertices to be equal to uh, to be equal to lambda two prime. Whereas this is a non-equation, so I don't want these two to sum to lambda two prime. So uh, the uh, two conditions for uh, two requirements for a graph to be a good graph is that uh, it should have consistent solutions and there should be no redundancy or degeneracy. Uh, this can be ensured by these three conditions that we abbreviate to NC, no cycle, NPL, non-zero path label, and NCL, non-zero cycle label. So if G is such a good graph with uh, alpha vertices, out of which QM vertices are involved in equations and QV vertices are involved in non-equations, then the minimum number of solu injective solutions to the uh, systems of equations and non-equations that uh, G induces, uh, we have proved it to be this number. And we can see that this bound is actually uh, weaker than the one provided by Pateran. His result was 2 power n permute alpha over 2 power n q. And uh, it, did, uh, it only involved equations. We are now ready to prove the security of n EHTM. So uh, we do that by bounding the number of injective solutions to the system of equations and non-equations that are obtained respectively by, uh, through the um, authentication and verification queries that an adversary makes. And uh, we use the two to tools, multi-collision theorem and mirror theory, for bounding the probabilities of the good and bad transcripts. So uh, this is how we get the authentication equations and verification non-equations. Uh, and we can certainly construct a graph to, uh, we can certainly construct a graph to uh, which induces these equations. And these are the bad events uh, wh whose probabilities are bounded uh, by these quantities. And in particular, the event B3 requires use of the multi-collision theorem that we saw earlier. The remaining equations and non-equations can then be bounded using our version of the mirror theory result. Finally, we uh, demonstrate our A scheme, uh, which is based on the CWC construction. This uh, has a privacy uh, beyond birthday bound privacy. However, its authenticity is broken on nonce misuse, whereas our construction, uh, it has beyond birthday bound privacy as well as beyond birthday bound authenticity, which gracefully degrades on nonce misuse. Mm. And to conclude, these are all the things that I have discussed, and thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Um, what do you need the domain separation for? Uh, do you need it just for technical, uh, pro uh, for, for your proof, or would there be an attack if you don't have domain separation? Uh, no, actually, uh, we would like uh, we would uh, we like to have uh, a single keyed version of EHTM, and that that's where we use the domain separation. It wouldn't affect the proof so much. Any more questions? Uh, yeah. So uh, maybe I missed it. But can you say something about the tightness of the bound? Is it clear that they are tight or? Uh, Okay, uh, we had a two power n by three, so yes. C is okay. Ah, uh, I'm not sure at the moment. Let me okay. just check. So we use this for the domains by point. No, I guess just if you know of a matching attack. So if you don't know, it's. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, f uh, we have a clear birthday bound attack when the nonce is misused. Right. And uh, I'm not so sure about the tightness right now. Maybe I'll dis I would like to discuss with it. Yeah, with discuss you later. <laughs> Sorry. Any more questions? Okay, so if not, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.